What's up, Warriors of Jigoku? Welcome back. We are showcasing off another character for Lore of the Warrior. As I have mentioned in the previous video with Lucifer, we are now going to be showing off the next character. Because I said it was either going to be Guang and Neo Shifeng or uh, Junko. And I decided to do Guang just to, one, get him done with and get him out of the way. Because uh, even though I love this man so much, I love this villain a lot. Uh, I do want to be able to show off Junko as well. Uh, after the fact, I can show off more of the newer characters that I've never shown off on this channel before, like Niu Shi Feng. Uh, show off Envy, show off Junko, and everyone else that I haven't shown off yet. So this will be fun. This will be fun. I like it. So I also do wish you could also pick, like, the soldiers that you have on your team and everything. Wow, Amelia, already? Are you kidding me? Slacking. Who's with me? Kasai? Kasai can handle this, right? I think Kasai can handle this, especially... Oh, yeah. And I'll be showing off that guy, too. <laughs> but yeah, so we'll be we'll be uh, showing off a lot of characters here. So I'm going to try to get them done as uh, as much as I can. So that way, when we're also ready for Fandler Friday, we can just hop in and just do more of that. And then we can hop in immediately and do Lore of the Warrior. So, like I mentioned, I'll probably be doing Lore of the Warrior. Yo, you can you better back off my waifu right now. I'll beat your ass. Hang on. Wait a second. Hold on. Let's have them all retreat because they're not doing too hot. They never really do hot over there. I just realized uh, Lucifer's there, so I don't. Well, I'm not worried about him. I don't think for now. Junko hasn't mentioned struggling either, but I think just for the sake of it, we'll keep them all safe. I think the only one who actually retreated so far was Amelia, which is, which that's fine. That's fine. So yeah, I don't really need to go too much in depth with Guang and everything because, like I've mentioned, uh, Guang had his own backstory already, and he's had his own trailer. So there's nothing like super crazy to go in depth with him about. But uh, if you do want to go see more in depth about Guang, then you can obviously go and check out him, uh, his backstory. I'll have that. I'll have a whole playlist of characters with their backstories and everything. Yo, why are you? Oh, actually, no. Let's have her. Uh... Are we individual? Yeah. Let's have. Let's have the waifu stick with me. How about that? I think that'll work out. And I'll probably. And if I don't. And if I remember, I'll do that for the next battle as well. With a. Uh... Uh oh. Yeah. Depending on how uh, well these battles go or how quickly they go. I also forgot about Chang'an because Chang'an is probably one of my least played ones. And that's not and that's surprising because it's actually this motherfucking bitch. Uh I got her. We're good. Oh really? You think you can outpower the great Wong? You were wrong. You were wrong to oppose me. Thank you, Mitsuhide. Uh now that actually makes me want to play more of the original Warriors Virtue games. Oh, of course you have recuperate. Why wouldn't you? Why not? Let's uh, let's drop these on your head and then spike them back up at you. Recuperate that. So yeah, Guang pretty much is one of the also another big villain in my part one story for Light. Uh, mostly, uh, the big story around him is along with uh, Hikari and uh, their little sister. Oh no! Why are you gonna hit? Oh, there she is. Speaking of the oh, I forgot about this. this. Works out perfectly. There she is. There's Hikari. Now that the brother and sister can battle it out. So yeah, the whole thing with them, they pretty much battle out. Uh, Guang is literally just an evil guy who does not like humans at all because of their parents, all because of Hikari, Guang, and Ember's parents being killed. So he, uh, ooh, let's help the waifu out there. Uh, so he ends up starting a whole thing, a whole, like, I guess it's kind of rebellion. I guess this is kind of like a thing with the Kaijimo rebellion, except this one actually ends up going very well. And Guang ends up taking pretty much most of the land and killing a lot of the pure humans that he finds to be incredibly judgmental, incredibly prejudiced, and all that stuff. Incredibly racist as well, and specious. Which, I mean, in ways he's not wrong. Humans do do that, and that's kind of one of the things I wanted to bring in with the realism in terms of racism and all that stuff. For those of you who are unaware, um, I did do a backstory, my very first backstory video, and I decided to do it with Benita because she really helps set the tone for the beginning of the story with all the racism and speciesism and all that stuff. So that really did help out, and it really shows like someone like Wong, who just couldn't take it anymore, and decided, I'm going to take joy in killing all these people because they take joy in doing the same to us. That's what he did. He ended up becoming very heartless about it. He ends up killing uh, any who, tries, who do try to oppose him, or any who do end up betraying him later on. So, for instance, uh, one in particular that he does end up killing is one of a close friend of his, but also technically like the boyfriend at the time of Hikari's as well. Uh, Leon Suo, I believe his name was. It's been a long time since I've even mentioned him because I never even did a video on him or anything like that. I pretty much just did like I made him just for the sake of uh, Hikari's backstory. I never actually like played as him. 
Uh, we're going to say that's, yeah, Lian Suo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he ends up killing Lian Suo, literally in the arms of Hikari. And Hikari then vows to kill Guang and then bring peace to the rest of the to the country. So he doesn't spread this kind of danger of m murder and war across the whole world. Because the, after the country, Guang was planning to do the, to the same thing to the rest of the world. Because this man is incredibly, incredibly powerful. He is not one of my strongest characters, but he's definitely up there. Um, he's definitely one of the closest to ever, like, in terms of villains at least, he's one of the closest to ever master, like, the hybrid form because he is a full-blown hybrid. Like Lucifer, he is a um, mystic human, which he rejects completely. He rejects himself being called a human, but he does accept his Kaijima and mystic side. And that also comes into uh, Neo Shifeng, but we'll, we'll mention her when we get further in and uh, showcase her as well. I think that'll be, I think that'll be better. Even though I'm not really a big fan of using that weapon, I kind of regret giving it to Kuno, but it is what it is. It's, it's, it's stronger than um, her wired gloves, which are incredibly weak. I'll, buff, I'll just use items to buff up uh, Nyu Shifeng. But uh, Guang don't need no buffs. Guang is the man. Look at him go. Look at him go. Speaking of, look at him go. Just one little baby slash and the base is mine. Wow. All right, let's go take out the base uh, over here on the left, and then we will go take out, uh, if, if they don't already, we'll take out the secondary camp as well. So yeah, I guess you guys, uh, I will say, hope you guys are okay with a decent amount of Dynasty Warriors 8 Empire videos, because, man, if you don't get that banner out of my damn face, uh, because this is going to help build up for the new series that we're going to be doing. Well, not technically new, the return of the series, uh, Lore of the Warrior. Oh, there's an officer in here, isn't there? Oh, it's Molly. All right. See, so yeah, I'm just using the same army and everything. I'll probably end up changing it up maybe after uh, New Shifang or do something else. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how I feel about it. But for now, I don't know, we might just end up st sticking with the same armies. Or maybe maybe diverse them all. Maybe make like people with the Kage, make people with the Hu Yang, and then the Shi Wong like I did with uh, Hellion's video. We'll do something like that, probably. That way I don't really have to change it up, but we still have the diversity of every single army in one. Ah, my baby sister, you are back. Not really that much of a baby sister. Like, I think like a year younger, I think I made her compared to him. I love that. I love when people stand up like, I'm okay. Ah, no, I'm not. Because Nekamoto literally just did that. Literally just took that blast, stood up, and she's like, I'm okay. Uh, no, I'm not. Good show. Actually, this was very fitting to have Mirabelle here because I know she's like really high on like having, um, like keeping an eye on Hikari and everything because like, I guess, I guess they become like best friends. That's what I pretty much got the vibe of with that backstory with uh, Lady Sundari's uh, Mirabelle. That's the vibe I got, at least. Let's go over and take out these next bases, and then we can move on to new Shifeng. Imagine me not being confident with saying her name. Yeah, okay, that's that. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I was, like, slightly, like, not, like, comfortable with uh, how to pronounce her name. But, yeah, that, that's how I say it. Or, actually, no, like, how to spell it, I guess I should say. All right, let's kill these bastards. Kill these weaklings. These weaklings. <laughs> That's Guang talking, not me, by the way. Don't worry, I'm also shit-talking my own CAC as well. Harna, get your weak ass out of here. And whoever else was over here ran away, I guess. I was hoping he was going to run into it at the last second. I mean, technically he did, Matsuo, but... Oh, you're not, you're not a regular old human, you're a mystic. You should join me, Matsuo. You should join us. And don't worry, I'm not going to change anyone's uh, alliances or any of that, like, allegiance to, like, so-and-so's army, so don't worry about that. I'm not doing that. Uh, you also have to look, check out uh, Season 2 when we eventually get to that, which will be a hot minute. I know for that for sure. So I know we still have to get through uh, Season 1. And for those of you who didn't hear from Lucifer's story, just in case, or if I didn't mention it... Wait, is there an enemy in here? Oh, no, there isn't. I think uh, Shi Fang was just doing her Muso. But yeah, um... Fuck. Because the new Shi Fang, like, flashing the purple. I forgot what I was trying to say. Really, bitch? Look at your weak, scrawny ass thinking you can beat me. I'm Guang. You can't beat the mighty Guang. I'm sorry. I am a hybrid, after all. Very powerful. Very strong. Very evil. All right, let's take out Afira, and I think we'll just take out the heart of the enemy as soon as we get there slowly. Let's, uh, let's use Temper. That was really pointless, because she's dead. She was already practically dead. I kind of just overkilled. All right, come on, waifu. Let's go take out. Um, let's go take out the rest of these these people. 
I'll probably just throw a dark spirit bomb in there. Or maybe a negative spirit bomb. I don't know what to call it. Let's try to get everyone round up so I can do it. Here we go. I think this will work. It worked. I missed, I missed a couple of them, but oh well. It is what it is. I'm evil. I don't look for perfection. I just look to be evil. Ha <laughs> ha. I look to kill. That's what Guang does pretty much. He just looks to kill. Any who oppose him. Just like that. Just like that strength right there. All right, just for the sake of making the video like not super long, I'm going to cut it here. So, uh, of course, guys, if you, do like, if you did like checking out Guang, then you got to make sure to hit that like button. Hit the like button if you're enjoying the video so far. And uh, I'll be right back with new Shifang. All right, and here we are. We are back and we are playing with new Shifang this time. So... Uh, it's time to go a little bit in depth with her, and I also just remembered that she does have this weapon, so I might actually just give Kuno. I'll keep the original, not the original look, but I'll keep the fan or the lore of the warrior looks. <laughs> excuse me, uh, for Kuno, but I'll probably give her back her wire gloves for that. In that case, if because I forgot that she also does have uh, this weapon. Damn. Okay, maybe I underestimated her strength. Well, she also have, does have the buff for when you uh, counter properly. But yeah, so here you go. This is. New Shifeng, she is a full-blown mystic. No hybrids or anything like that. Oh, shit. She is... Like I meant, yeah, so she is a full-blown mystic. She was actually someone before Guang ended up taking over, and uh, they pretty much just ended up becoming bangmates. She was someone who ended up going over a small mystic tribe and everything like that in the area, because uh, like Guang, she was kind of fed up with how humans were being... were, uh, were treating... People like Ninsu, people like Kaijima, and Mystics as well, due to intimidation, because they think Mystics are possibly like one of the most amazing beings, like like super like they, they like at times Mystics are treated like deities, and sometimes they are mistreated because of that, because of like how they are. They usually like either try to kill them off because they're because they don't want the population of Mystics to be huge in that realm or country or something like that. So Neo Shifeng ended up just getting a really big distrust and hate for humans. She didn't hate all humans. She did at times try to keep peace between uh, her people and the humans as best as she could. But then Guang ended up coming into the picture and then encroaching upon her territory, which then, in fact, by Ember, which then, <laughs> which then in fact, uh, took a lot of convincing and then, not to mention a lot of, I don't want to say seduction, but it also took a lot of something along those lines as well, I guess. Uh, sex appeal or something maybe like that ended up being a factor into Guang's manipulation towards Niu Shifeng. Yes, manipulation. Uh, at, well, at first, but first it was nothing more than just pure manipulation. So she, so he could just get what she wants, get what he wants. Excuse me, and just be able to have control of a, a bunch of mystics as well as take over her territory. So that was the main goal for that, especially due to the fact that she was herself was a huge prodigy. And what the fuck are you running from, bitch? Get your ass back, coward. Anyway, as I was saying... Oh, thank you, Guang. Guang with the uh, archer ambush. But yeah, as I was saying... So yeah, at first, it all became nothing but... Uh, as, as a means to... Deduce her into just becoming part of her side. And she fell for it hook, line, and sinker. She saw this raw power that he had. Saw, obviously, I guess... I guess his looks could be part of that as well. And that he... He was able to deceive her so well that she really thought he was doing a kindness for her. But at the same time, it was mostly just him just trying to... Just manipulate her and try to get her to join his army just for the sake of her strength and her people which like i said didn't end up work it did end up working out and she did become the wife of guang so she ended up actually having a bit of a marriage with him and then also be having this big alliance between mystics and guang's army so with all that being said with um turn when it came down to it as they became more and more like like more time towards one another guang actually did end up changing a part of his mind just ever so slightly it did him he helping like um give him a softer side in the story and eventually he did become much more attached to her more than just like as a means of like military strength he did end up considering her to be an actual wife he did not want any harm to come towards her or anything like that so whenever he did get harm towards or whenever harm did come towards new shifeng's way he kind of went into a blind rage and would pretty much just unleashed his beast mode hybrid mode which would absolutely probably decimate i'd say i wouldn't say a whole army but i'd say half an army which is still incredibly amazing seeing as how he is just one person also as you can tell i had a lot of the uh the battleground already pretty much there uh i'd have the battlefield under my control already just for the sake of not making this video incredibly long so i can try to record everyone else's stuff off the bat 
So I'm not going to be able to do everyone's in one day, but I'll try to get, like, at least half of them done. So that way I can just have them done and just be ready for uh, uploading, like, whatever day I want them to. So there might be days where you get double uploads, and if I'm really feeling like recording a certain game, you better chill out with that shit. Darkness my ass. So let's take out uh, Kuru here. I also really do like her, uh, her Kage look. I think it looks really good on her. Okay, the next one will most likely be Junko that I'm going to be showcasing next. Nothing really super... Like I mentioned, she is a very big character like for Guang's the character development, but at the same time, she doesn't have like any huge role after the fact with uh, marrying Guang and then giving him a little bit of a softer side. Like He does just become a little more considerate towards... Uh, his, and, he, and don't get me wrong, he's not like a dictator or anything like that. Guang, it does care about like the people... If he if he didn't, he's not doing this solely just to kill. He's doing this so he can have the people, like his people, be like free from all like, just free from humans. Like because humans like in his realm are kind of dastardly, but at the same time they're also really good pure humans as well. But he doesn't really care to see that. He only cares to see the bad side of humans. Unlike Light, who did end up seeing the good side of humans, which is why which is why I like to always consider Guang being like. What would light be if he decided to just give in to all that hate and then just aim it all towards the humans and then cause a huge war? This is technically what would happen. Except technically, since... Uh, oh, Junko got a prince as well. What does this do? What is this? I want to see what this does, like, really badly. Oh, I just stomp on their head. All right, dope. <laughs> Gonna be a little disrespectful there. But I think she just has the complete uh, moveset of the short rod. I'm not sure. I think that's what it's called as well. I'm not. I'm not 100% certain. I don't really use this weapon that much at all. It's not a horrible weapon, but it's it's not one of my favorites. Like I think the like the charge attacks and everything are really cool. And then I realized they were for Shuga Dawn. I was like, this is really weird. I would have just given him like a unique kind of war fan or something like that. Like how they technically uh, still kept like Demi Yi around with like some kind of like strategist kind of weapon. Yo, Hikari is killing it over there. We need to take out this base quickly. He's going to be encroaching on my territory very soon. Like, my main camp territory. Why did I run in there? That was really stupid of me. Let's just finish off Kuru here. Alright, you're gone. Nice. <laughs> Got that right on his head. Yeah, we need to take this base. That way, all these other bases are that they've been capturing, is it's completely pointless. I just need to make sure no one else gets in here. Otherwise, I'm probably going to get screwed. There we go. No problem. Alright, let's get in there and take out the enemy commander. This actually is a lot longer than I thought. I didn't realize that we were going for this long already. Alright. Yeah, it's completely just a short rod. I might end up changing that down the line, but she wasn't really such a huge character to me. Like, I like her design. I like that she uh, gives a little more development for Guang and everything like that, but... All in all, she wasn't really like meant to be a huge, impactful character. Then again, she is kind of impactful because, um, I guess, yeah, I guess in a way she actually is very impactful, like, later on in the story, but that only takes effect in, like, part three and four, where it gets to more modern times and everything like that, which I also go to explain as well whenever I do videos about that as well. So, yeah. So, all right, guys, so, yeah, that is the, that is the showcase for Liu Shifeng and Guang. Here we are, disrespectfully slashing at my husband there. So, yeah. If you guys did enjoy checking out the uh, the showcase for them and getting a little more background towards Guang and Yushi Feng and their relationship with one another, uh, then you got to be sure to hit that like button. Comment down below as well the thoughts on both these characters. And of course, if you're new to the channel, then be sure to hit that sub button because y'all have been crushing that sub button. I didn't even realize. I was like, I looked at it one day. I was like, oh, just like spiked up a little bit. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so yeah. If you do enjoy it, sure to hit that sub button because I'm really appreciating your guys' support on that. So with that being said, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. A farewell.